Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, guys. Um, this is Pastor Danny McElroy with Overcoming Church. Um, I just want to say God bless you today. Um, I pray that you guys, your day is going well. It's a beautiful day today. Um, I got something I want to share with you guys. I want to talk to you all about the ministry of the prophetess Jezebel. And, you know, I would much rather, you know, be, I would much rather, you know, desire to be worshiping and, you know, and just having a good old sweet Holy Ghost time in the presence of the Lord. Um, however, there's some things that are on my heart and some things that are concerning that I just really want to share with you. And so I just want to talk to you guys real briefly today about the false prophetic ministry of Jezebel. And I need you to listen to me. A few weeks ago, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, this came to my spirit. Um, if it seems like I'm getting distracted, you know, I, I am just having to make sure there's no technical problems. A few weeks ago, something came to my spirit and the Lord said to me, um, that he's dealing with the spiritual inheritance, okay? The spiritual inheritance of women of God, women of God specifically in the ministry. And he took me back to Leviticus where it talked about the daughters of Zelophehad. And if you remember that story, these were descendants by blood, right? They were descendants of Moses, but because they were women and because they were females and because of the very plan of the enemy going back to Genesis chapter 2, um, they did not receive their inheritance. And so these women, they went to Moses and they cried out to Moses and they said to Moses, where is our inheritance? For we are true daughters of Zelophehad. And so Moses went back to the Lord to intercede for the women. And the Lord said to Moses, they are right. They are, listen, you owe them their inheritance, which was a part of the land. It was a part of the promise, okay? And, and, and so he began to speak to me about there are women that have been, uh, that have been cast and uh, have been withheld concerning their spiritual inheritance. And then he began to show me how we're going to see just an emergence of prophecy prophetic women carrying that anointing like Deborah that are coming on the scene. But in the goodness of God, he also showed me a pseudo plan of Satan that I want to talk to you about very briefly. He also began to show me that there are women who are coming into the ministry now that how the Lord said it, they are destroying the integrity of true God fearing women, God fearing women who God has called to leadership, who God has called to the ministry of the pastor, prophet, elder, apostle, whatever. They're destroying their integrity. And here is how, because some of the women and men, but I'm emphasizing women in this particular moment, they're coming into the ministry and it looks like the anointing. It looks like a prophetess. It looks like a female apostle, but it is the spirit of Jezebel. He said that if we don't stop this or correct it, or if we don't warn people, they're going to destroy the beautiful integrity and the image and the heritage of women like Iona Locke and Estella Boyd, women who God has raised up throughout the church age that have laid a beautiful path for the daughters of the faith, for the women of God to come forth and to be who they are and to receive their inheritance. There are imposters that if we don't set it right so people can rightfully discern who they are from those who genuinely are the Deborahs of the end time, they're going to destroy the integrity and the inheritance that older women of the faith have left. Now, I want to say something. What I'm getting ready to talk about being that of the spirit of Jezebel, it can operate in both men and women. But the reason why I'm emphasizing the female, it's because when God shared that to me, he was speaking about female ministers. But the spirit of Jezebel that I'm going to speak about in Revelation chapter 2, it's not sexist. Demons are not sexist, you all. It can operate in a man and it can operate in a woman. And so let me share what's going on right now. There is a prophet 
prophetic explosion that is happening in the body of Christ. And we're going to see it increase. We're seeing people come into their ministry. We're seeing um, a, a hunger and a thirst and even some instances an addiction to the prophetic ministry. Some of this is the working of end time prophecy. Some of this is the Holy Spirit that is birthing a prophetic church of sons and daughters that will prophesy. But we also see the spirit of the Antichrist as the Bible says that even Satan and his ministers can do what? Camouflage themselves as ministers and angels of light. And so what I want to do through the power of the Holy Spirit is to help us discern what is the true prophetic ministry that is operating in the church versus the prophetic ministry of Jezebel that many of us are connected to? Let's read this. Galatians chapter 5 verse 8. It says, this deception, this persuasion is not from him who called you to freedom in Christ. I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, a little leaven, which is a slight inclination to error or a few false teachers, okay, leavens the whole batch of bread, meaning it perverts the concept of faith and misleads the entire church. Right now, you all, there are people who are operating in the pulpits on Facebook, on YouTube, and I'm telling you, it looks so much like God. It looks so much like the anointing. It looks so much like the spirit of God. But there is a deception in it that I'm going to explain to you. There is a deception in it that if you're not recognizing that deception, it will mislead you away from Christ. Now, Revelation chapter 2, verse um, 20, it says, but I have this charge against you. And this is Jesus speaking to the church, okay? But I have this charge against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel. Wait a minute. Jesus is rebuking the church because they're not rebuking this Jezebel. Now, there are two Jezebels in the Bible that we mainly talk about. Right now, I'm speaking about the prophetess Jezebel in Revelation chapter 2. I'm not really speaking about the uh, Jezebel, Ahab's wife. I'm speaking about the, the prophetess Jezebel that was influencing the church in Revelation chapter 2. Y'all have to hear me by the Spirit. There is a There are prophetess Jezebels that are influencing the church right now, right here. And they are misleading the church away from Christ. They are mis misleading the church away from the very things that Jesus taught. If you listen long enough, there is an emergence of ministers and preachers and pastors that are literally getting in the pulpit preaching the very opposite of what Jesus and the apostles taught. Paul said, lay no other foundation other than Christ himself. They are literally uprooting the very foundation of Jesus Christ in the the tenets of our Christian faith and what we believe. This deception, as Paul said in Galatians, it didn't come from Christ. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? My prayer is, is that the Lord would break the power of witchcraft and Jezebel and confusion that is manipulating God's people, causing them to receive lies as though it is the truth. And so he says, this is one issue I have against you. You've done everything good. Your worship is beautiful. Your praise is good. You're giving your tithe. You're giving your offering. You're giving to the poor. You're expanding the ministry. You've got discipleship going on. Beautiful. <coughs> Hallelujah. But there is one issue that I have with you. You are tolerating this Jezebel. You're tolerating her. You're tolerating this Jezebel. This Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess, claiming to be inspired. Oh, come on, y'all. Claiming to be inspired. There are prophetic voices, and, and you got to follow me because I'm going a little deeper, but I'm taking my time. I'm building a foundation. There are voices that are claiming that all of this revelation that they're receiving, and, and, and nobody has the revelation that I have. Nobody's doing ministry like I'm doing ministry. Nobody's prophesying like I'm prophesying. They're claiming that all of the utterances that are coming out of them in their ministry is inspired by the Holy Ghost. How can anything be inspired by the Holy Spirit? spirit when it literally contradicts the word of God. 
true prophetic ministry testifies of Jesus. The true anointing of the prophetic does not glorify the vessel. It does not glorify the denomination. It does not glorify the manifestation. Witches and warlocks do. Divination does. Witchcraft. But the Holy Spirit in any manifestation, he will always glorify Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit is moving, when the Holy Spirit is operating, when the Holy Spirit is doing his thing, he will bring the focus and the attention back to praise and glory to Jesus Christ. But the working of the flesh or the working of a strange spirit or unclean spirit, it will put the focus on man. It will put the focus on performance. It will put the focus on entertainment. There are some of you that are literally caught up in ministries that have totally made it about how anointed, how prophetic, how accurate, and how awesome and wonderful they are. It's a celebrity show. This is the spirit of Jezebel claiming to be inspired and teaches and misleads my bond servants. Now stop right there. She teaches and she misleads. She teaches meaning she has a platform. She has a platform, y'all. She can preach. She can prophesy. She can teach. She can get the masses. She can attract people. Why? Because she teaches. You cannot teach without having a microphone. That means that she has the ability and the capability to captivate the masses and the audience. She has a platform to instruct people. He says she teaches and she misleads. Now listen, remember what Paul said, for the Spirit saith expressly that in the last days many would depart away from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Keep that in mind. Here's the spirit of Jezebel. She teaches. That's the doctrine, y'all. The doctrine is what do you believe? What do you believe? When you say doctrine, you go to a church and you talk to the pastor. Hey, what, 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 what are the doctrines of your church? The doctrine is your belief system. Now remember, Paul said, lay no other foundation other than Christ. The foundation of the church is the doctrine of the church. It is what we believe and it is not what we, it is what we believe and what, it is what we don't believe. Don't ever let nobody tell you that what you believe doctrinally is not important. The devil is a liar. Because Paul said, if anybody comes preaching another gospel, even if it's an angel, let them be a curse. My question is to you, what do you believe? Because if you don't know what you believe, and if what you believe is not in alignment with what Jesus and the apostles taught, you could be being seduced by the spirit of Jezebel right now. Why? Because she teaches. It's the doctrine. It's the belief system. It's the information. She teaches and she misleads. Okay, go back to what Paul said. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine. The seducing spirit is Jezebel's deception. The doctrine is the information that she's teaching you. Come on, y'all. Some of us don't even realize, Lord have mercy. Oh, that's why I'm that's why I'm preaching so hard, because in, in my preaching, I'm praying that the spirit of God would just break that tentacle, break that covenant that some of you have with Jezebelic ministries and Jezebelic ministers. And you don't even know it. He says, my she says, he says, this Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess, she teaches and she misleads my bond servants. Now, let me tell you something. He didn't say she's misleading the world. Come on, y'all. The prophetess is in the church. The false prophetess is in the church. The false prophetic ministry is in the church. The devil is in the church. Come on. Stop looking out there for the devil to be deceiving you. No, he's deceiving some of you right from the pulpit. I'm not making it up. Wait. She teaches and misleads my bond servants. The church. Where's the church? The church is the church. In the church. Sunday morning. Let's keep reading. So they commit acts of sexual immorality and food sacrifice to idols. Now let me stop right there. One of the things about deception that you need to understand is that it cannot be deception if it's obvious. If Satan is coming to your house, knocking on the door and saying, hey, I'm Satan, I'm coming to deceive you. Come on, y'all think it's not deception. 
In order for it to be deception, it cannot be obvious. So when Jesus is saying that this false prophetess Jezebel is deceiving God's people, she's not obviously doing it. So when the Bible says that she's teaching the church to commit acts of sexual immorality, get the revelation. She's not doing it blatantly, y'all. She's not coming up in the pulpit and saying, I am prophetess Jezebel and I'm here to give you a word from God. And I'm telling you, go out and commit sexual immorality and fornicate with people. Listen, some of y'all may take this the wrong way. Give the devil a little bit more credit. He ain't stupid. Genesis chapter two said that he was cunning, the most cunning creature out of them all. So Danny, how is this, how is this Jezebel deceiving people into sexual immorality? I will tell you, it is through indirect preaching teachings, and a series of rhetoric that is cultivated in a church atmosphere permission to do anything without conviction. Did you hear me? How is Jezebel teaching the church to commit acts of sexual morality? It's not blatant because it cannot be deception if it's obvious. It cannot be deception if it's right in front of your, in front of your face. The very premise of deception is to trick you and to bewitch you. And so it's indirect what? Teaching, indirect preaching, and it does not happen overnight. It's an indirect impartation of teachings and sermons and statements and rhetoric and verbiage that has cultivated in a church atmosphere the license to walk in carnality without any conviction. In other words, the preacher does not have to tell you to go out and fornicate because they've created a culture of no conviction where you can go and do it and there's not going to be any correction. That's how Jezebel misleads God's people into sexual morality because there is no stance to take against it. So when Jesus is saying she teaches them to commit acts of sexual morality, she ain't out here blatantly coming to the pulpit saying, y'all, the Spirit of the Lord says, go out and have sex wherever you want and do it. No, no, come on, y'all. Give the devil, I know some of you ain't going to know what I mean when I say, give the devil more credit than that. He's not stupid. His objective is to deceive you, and therefore his approach is to do it in such a strategic way that you don't even know he's doing it. Let's keep going. She teaches and mis misleads my bond servants so that they, they commit acts of sexual morality and eat food sacrificed to idols. Stop there. Well, Danny, I don't got nobody up in the church telling me to eat food sacrificed to idols. Come on, y'all. Think a little deeper. Now, now, is Jesus suggesting that, you know, this actual prophetess called Jezebel 2,000 years ago was actually teaching the church to eat food that was knowingly sacrificed to idols such as maybe Baal or Bolak? Possibly so. But let's go a little deeper. Food also is information. Y'all, I have a question. The information, the teaching, the revelation that you're listening to on Sunday morning when you're coming on social media, what tree is it coming from? Let me tell you something. Food is not just physical. Right now, as I'm preaching, I am ministering food into your spirit because food is also information. Don't just be limited to your flesh. Your flesh is not the only part of you that eats. Your soul eats. Your spirit eats. Your mind eats. And so Jezebel, she's presenting food that has been sacrificed to idols to the people who are following her ministry, meaning the revelation and the preaching, the sermon that she is so-called receiving from God. It's actually carnal. It's demonic wisdom. It's the revelation that comes from the fallen man and she's delivering into God's people. And guess what? Now we wonder why the church looks carnal because she's eating carnal food. Why does the church look so carnal? Why is the church so messy? Because what she's eating on Sunday morning is mess. What you eat is what you become. I'm talking about the spirit of Jezebel. Y'all, this is the spirit that is literally dominating the prophetic ministry in the church. And I would even go on to say, in addition to that, it's dominating the black prophetic ministry.
It is a Jezebelic spirit. And there's another component of Jezebel that I'm getting ready to share with you. And it kind of goes back to the sexual immorality. So, so she's doing three things. She's teaching people to commit acts of sexual morality. And she's, she's, and she's, 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 she's causing them to eat food that has been sacrificed to idol. But here's something else that I want to mention. Je this Jezebel is all about sex appeal. Listen to me. That is why you can have people get into a pulpit and they look sexy. Got the, and I'm not limiting this to females, okay? I'm not limiting this to females, but as I stated earlier when I started this, God gave me a word for female ministers. But this can be for men. Get in the pulpit, got the eyelashes, got the hair, got the, I mean, just, just, just beautiful, but ain't no word coming out of their spirit. There is no depth of the word. Why? Because it's all about a sex appeal. This spirit of Jezebel, it's all about outwardly attraction. That is a seducing spirit. Some of these people that are bringing the masses, it's not because the people are desiring the word. The people are desiring the spirit of attraction that is exuding from them outwardly because there's nothing on the inside of them. Jesus said, labor not after meat that perishes. Why are you following that ministry? Why are you following my ministry? You got to, why are you following the ministry? Are, are, are you are you eating the word? Are you drinking the word? Are you being nourished? Or is there a spirit of sexual seduction and sex appeal and you are so enamored by the beauty and by the splendor and by the attire of the person that you're listening to, even if what's coming out of their mouth is food that is unspiritual? It's unspiritual food. It's carnal food. It's, it's, it's demonic wisdom. It's the wisdom of this flesh. It's not preaching that has been inspired by the Holy Spirit that has the anointing to stir Christ in you until you are a fully developed Christian. It's carnal preaching that keeps you in flesh, keeps you in strife, envy, jealousy, pride of life. How am I going to get a bigger house? How am I going to get a bigger car? And I'm going to tell y'all something. It looks so good. Oh, Lord. And if you don't got the Holy Ghost, you would eat that stuff up because it appeals to what? Your carnal man. Oh, my God. This is where most of the church is right now. They are literally in covenant and in bondage to ministries that are only imparting to the carnal man. Carnal man. No spirit. No spirit. No anointing. No nature of Christ. No fruit of the spirit. It's just nothing but carnality. And then they try to mix carnality with spiritual gifts. What happens when you try to mix carnality with the gifts of the Holy Spirit? And so you want to be prophetic, but you're in your flesh. That's, that's, that's where witchcraft is birthed. This is the false prophetic. Oh, Lord, y'all got to excuse me because as I'm preaching it, God is showing me. This is the ministry of Jezebel. It is carnal prophetic mixed together. What happens when you mix prophetic ministry with flesh? You get carnality you get sin you get you get sensationalism you get an ugly perversion of the holy spirit uh oh it becomes strange fire well denny i felt something i'm oh, sure you did sure you did it's called a kundalini spirit of course you felt something let's read this one more time but i have this charge against you that you tolerate this woman. Stop tolerating these ministries that are not giving you the word. They're giving you everything else but the word. Are you not hungry for the word? The water of life? I need the word. I need a word from the Lord. I need a rhema word. I need a logos. If you don't got a rhema word, I'll settle for the logos word. If you don't have a prophetic word, I will settle for the written word of God. You don't always have to have a prophetic word, but at least give me line upon line, precept upon precept. Is there anybody that's hungry for the word? The word, the pure word of God, the word that actually transforms you, the word that actually cleanses up your little filthy mind. 
The word that deals with the strongholds in you. The word that actually brings you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Or do you want the meat that perishes? Labor not after meat that perishes. Do you only want the carnal distribution of God that you don't want to come into the spiritual nourishment of his spirit? You just want to stay in the flesh. Let me tell you something. I... I, I, I there's nothing wrong with sermons and messages that relate to the natural experience of man. Because we all are man. We say man of God. We still have the, 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 the experience of living in this life. And so sometimes we just need sermons that break it all the way down to just the experience of living this life in the flesh. But in 52 Sundays out of the year, every sermon is flesh bound. How can we elevate into the things of the spirit? Paul said, set your mind on things that are above, that are seated at the right hand of the father. Stop making a golden calf out of flesh bound sermons. Eventually, y'all, we got to grow up. We have to stretch ourselves out in the spirit. We got to go to the next dimension in God. But I have this charge against you. You tolerate this woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet is claiming to be inspired and she teaches and she misleads my bond servants so they commit acts of sexual morality and, 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 and food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, to change her inner self in her simple way of thinking but she had no desire. Oh, Lord, this spirit of Jezebel don't have no desire. Have no desire to repent of her immorality and refuses to do so. Listen carefully. I will throw her on a bed of sickness and those who commit adultery with her. And this is where I conclude. You have to break covenant. Ah, you have to break covenant. Lord Jesus, y'all hear me. Jesus. And, you know, it's my spirit crying out, y'all. The intercessor in me is just crying out right now. You have to break covenant with these prophetic ministries. That are operating under strange fire. There's no other way I can make it plain. And it's like, Lord, how can I tell people to break their covenant when they can't even discern that it's a strange fire? I'm literally asking God, give me practical wisdom to teach this because people can't renounce something that they don't even know that they're connected with. And he said, Danny, take them back to the word. Take them back to what the Holy Spirit looks like. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not out here inspiring sex appeal. The Holy Spirit is not out here inspiring carnality. Listen, the liberty that you have in Christ, according to Galatians chapter 5, the liberty that you have in Christ is not to take an occasion and, well, I'm just free. My preacher, my prophet is, Lord, y'all hear me. This is what we're saying in church. My prophet is, my preacher said that I'm free. The Lord says the liberty that you have was not to take an occasion in the flesh. You have been liberated from the law of Moses to come under the law of love. You ain't free. You are only liberated from the penalty of the law of Moses that brought shame, guilt, and condemnation. Y'all, we're still under another law. It's the law of righteousness. It's the law of holiness. It's the law of love. You ain't free so that you can just come out here and bust hell wide open to just do anything that you want. Well, I'm free in Christ. The devil is a liar. That is not the liberty that Christ is speaking about. It's not the liberty that Paul speaks about. Read the word. Study it to show yourself approved. He freed us from the law of Moses only to become what? He said it, bond servants to the law of love. Christ says, those that love me, keep my word. Now, we all fall short. We all make mistakes. Uh, come on, I'll start with me. But I'm going to tell y'all something. We don't make a bed in our flaws. We don't make a bed in our sin, nor do we make a doctrine about it. 
We repent and we get back up and we hold to the standard of the word. Why? Because if we by just one means, go back to Galatians, a little leaven in the bread, oh my gosh, it destroys the entire lump. If we allow a little dirt in the water, who's going to drink a little dirt in the water? We cannot allow the purity of our faith. Even if we're struggling, we can't even allow our struggle to cause us to be seduced by a spirit to cause us to compromise the word. The word is pure. The church is pure. Watch out for the spirit of Jezebel. Sure, she can prophesy. Sure, there's accuracy in their ministry, male and female. But remember the food that sacrificed to idols. Listen, witches and warlocks can prophesy. There is a thing called divination. Where is the spirit coming from? Where is the not? What is the source of the knowledge? It's not always the Holy Ghost if it's not bearing the fruit of the spirit. When you have any prophet or prophetess that is standing in a pulpit and they're spending more time telling you how anointed they are than glorifying Jesus, it's not the spirit of God. And you have an immature church that can't discern that. Danny, why are you so frustrated? Because this is the stupidity that I see on my timeline. We're sharing more false prophets and prophetess than, than folks that are actually giving you the word of God. Because in reality, we don't want the word. We want, we want the things that Jezebel is offering us. Sex appeal, money, fame, carnality, food, information, wisdom that appeals to your carnality, sexual morality, false liberty to do. So we don't want the word. And so I hear the Holy Ghost. And so some of us are not that carnal that we're going to forsake God. So we'll find a ministry that straddles the fence. Will give us a little bit of word, but enough flesh where we can instill enjoy ourselves. Reckon yourself to be dead. 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 <laughs> Friends and family. Break your covenant with Jezebel and her false prophetic ministry. Break your covenant, okay? Break your covenant. Father, we just thank you even now, Lord, we glorify you because of your word. Lord, I'm praying for a spirit of discernment. But Lord, we know that discernment is exercised through the word. God, we can't ask for discernment, but then throw the Bible on the bookshelf and let it collect, let it collect dust. Discernment is increased when we are reading your word under the inspiration and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that you would open eyes, enlighten the eyes of our understanding. I'm not talking about no third eye. That's witchcraft. Open up the eyes of our spirit that is in Christ Jesus. Bring us back to the word. Bring us back to truth. Break the power of deception. Break the lie of Jezebel in our ear so that we may hear the voice of Jesus speaking to the Holy Spirit, as you said, to they that have an ear, hear what it is. Wait a minute. That the Holy Spirit is speaking. The Holy Spirit is speaking the word. Father, these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, y'all, my heart is just for us to get back to what we know. We are in the end time. And the Bible says that there's an increase of deception. Paul said that evil men will deceive, waxing worse and worse while being deceived themselves. In other words, we can't run away from the fact that deception is a part of the attribute of the end time. But if you stay in the word and if you put on the whole armor of God and if you put on the helmet of truth, gird up your loins, if you renew your mind, if you keep your mind, if you go to a church that preaches a word of God, mixing the spirit with the word, not just the letter of the word. You will stay safe. You will succeed. You will excel. You will remain covered. But if you step out of the word, if you step out of the Holy Spirit, if you step into something else, y'all, you're going to be pulled. You're going to be seduced because the deception that is working in this hour, it appeals to this carnal man, y'all. 
stay in the word. Okay, stay, stay on your face before God. That's all I'm praying. God bless.